call the uh, planning board meeting to order. We um, usually start off by introducing ourselves. So, sorry, Reggie Thomas, Craig Pina, I'm Dave Wheeler, Pamela Gurley, Paul Palagi, Gary Keith Sr. Okay, great. Um, and we have Rob May here, the director of planning for uh, the city of Rockford. Uh, so, what's going to happen is we're going to have a short presentation by Mr. May on the blueprint for Brockton. Then the board will um, have maybe up some questions and deliberate a little bit. Um, then we'll open it up if anyone wants to have any comments uh, or say anything to us. And then we will vote on the plan. And then we will adjourn. So with that, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, again, my name is Rob May. I'm Director of Planning and Economic Development for the City of Brockton. And uh, we're here tonight to um, roll out the final step of the Blueprint for Brockton, which has been in process for over a year now. Um, it was just last, year, uh, last summer that uh, we started having a series of listening sessions uh, in the middle school. So we did north, south, east, west. Um, we met with the seniors at the uh, Council, of Age, Council on Aging, and we met with a couple of church groups, so uh, we've even been to a, um, uh, a neighborhood party in, the, um, uh, in one of the parks. So we've been all over um, on this road show, and we've heard a lot of comments from people. We've got a lot of suggestions from folks. We've incorporated that all into our um, comprehensive plan. It's the first plan that we've had since 1996, or 98. Um, so it, it was due for an update because Brockton has changed a lot since 1998. If you haven't looked around and noticed that. Um, so what, uh, uh, what we started to do uh, basically is, is have this public feedback and participata participatory process because what happened in the past is that you get a couple of people, the same, the usual suspects, they all meet in a room somewhere they come up with a plan and they roll it out and it's supposed to be the community's plan. Well, if the community hasn't been involved with it, the community's not going to accept it and run with it uh, and adopt it as their own. So that's why we had such a, uh, an important um, uh, communications process. Uh, we've been in the newspaper and we've been on uh, Facebook. We've been on cable a couple of times. So um, it's an important um, uh, process here tonight. Uh, as, as part of the state requirements, the planning board needs to adopt the, um, the comprehensive plan. And then as an extra step, sort of suspenders and belt, although I'm not wearing a belt, uh, is that we would like to then present this to the city council. And we would like the city council to adopt this uh, as a policy piece that is going to help guide the decisions that the mayor, the council, the planning board, the zoning board, our other boards and commissions um, use in weighing our decisions. So the first question we should ask is, does the decision I'm making support the comprehensive plan? Uh, does it advance this program or, or does it you know, kind of skirt around the side of it? And we hope that people will say, yes, it supports the plan and this is why we need to do these uh, items. So with that, I'd like to introduce Steve Cecil. Uh, from uh, Harriman Consulting, who uh, we hire to help us through this process. And uh, Jennifer, down here, wave. All right, <laughs> that, that's okay. We'll move the camera later. Um, but we're going to take you through a uh, brief, please God, brief PowerPoint presentation, and then we'll uh, open it up to the board for questions. So if you want to, great, kick it away. So if the board wants to move over here so they can see better, that's fine. Good evening. So we're going to compress in a, in a few minutes a process that uh, has in, uh, taken over a year of consultation and, and uh, participation and contributions. I'd like to, uh, in addition to, of course, Rob and Shane uh, uh, being key to this, our team included uh, FXM Associates for Economics, BSC Group for Traffic and Infrastructure, and McMahon Associates. So we've had a multidisciplinary team of planners focusing on the different aspects of the uh, comprehensive plan. It's important for uh, the city to have a plan in part because the state has a set of uh, uh, legal standards uh, that uh, encourage communities to 
provide a comprehensive plan, and that can be then linked to grants and funding and other resources over time. So updating this and fulfilling the set of standards and requirements associated with those state standards is an important part of the process. Uh, it has been a participatory process throughout. Um, we have had uh, uh, a series of meetings, uh, working groups. We did a series of listening tours in different wards in uh, Brockton. We had surveys available, surveys online, uh, workshops where we focused on what we're going to talk about are the elements of a plan, the elements being the key topics. Uh, right down through the, the draft report meetings and again public opportunities for input this evening. Uh, the overall timeline uh, began into a significant uh, uh, kickoff in May uh, of last year and by the end of uh, uh, May this year we had pretty well put the plan together uh, and had a, a meeting at that point. But you'll see in this list uh, one, two, three, four leadership meetings, and there was a leadership committee representing different interests, constituencies, area of the city, areas of the city, to make sure that we were constantly checking uh, our progress and thoughts relative to those uh, uh, points of view. So, if I could just take a minute and, and talk about the leadership team, and, and some members are here, and I appreciate you all coming out. Um, not only did we have um, co-leaders for each of the elements or chapters. So there were people who were experts in the field of transportation, from, experts from Brockton on transportation, on economic development, on housing, uh, on, on social services and, and programs. We also had and asked for representatives, each of the city councilors, to have someone representing them on the leadership team. So, you know, this is not a us versus them. This is, this is all of us participating. We also went out and had advocates for specific groups. So there was an advocate for the uh, minority communities. There was an advocate for the seniors, an advocate for the youth, and an advocate for the immigrant community. So the role of the advocates were to go out and to get information from their community to bring it back to us to represent what their concerns were and what their hopes and, and uh, dreams are as we create this blueprint for Brockton. Uh, there's a vision uh, for Brockton that is incorporated in the initial pages of the plan. And I won't read through this. Uh, 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 you can read it as uh, we look at it, but there are a few key phrases and ideas here. And that is that uh, a very important uh, set of trends is coming together at the right time for Brockton. As we're looking ahead, although we're so cognizant of the history and tradition uh, of Brockton, uh, this is the 21st century, and those 21st century trends in terms of a transit-served uh, uh, community that offers this interesting combination of urban places and neighborhoods of high quality uh, uh, is where uh, people are headed in many ways and so our job is to recognize that recognize the values that are here uh, but as we move ahead find those opportunities where the 21st century city can emerge uh, to do that there are certain things that uh, the plan says uh, will will happen uh, uh, the notion of a strong downtown is, is, is very important uh, and the commercial characteristics that it has, stable and safe neighborhoods. Uh, but uh, what the 21st century means in the greater Boston region uh, and in New England is being in entrepreneurial locations where the kinds of places, cultural facilities, recreational facilities, transportation uh, opportunities come together. Uh, to underline a key point among this list that you're reading is this notion, however, that uh, the stewards of the community future will not be just elected officials and appointed uh, members and staff. It's going to be a matter of this community recognizing increasingly that the future is in your hands and participating actively in implementing the ideas in the plan. It's true. We are Brockton. It's not just the elected officials. It's not just, you know, people who've owned property here for a long time. It's not necessarily, you know, people who've been appointed to positions or run big nonprofits or things like that. It's, it's us. Oh, I wanted to see if she wanted water. 
Um, it's people like us who are, live here, work here, play here, shop here. Um, it's our community, and, it's, and so for us to really prosper, we have to take some responsibility and some ownership of our community. And that's something that's been missing. And we really want to look at how we get people back into the neighborhoods and back taking local leadership. Uh, so, as I mentioned, there are a series of elements that are core to uh, any master plan, and they're listed, uh, the eight elements um, uh, that, that come together. But one of the things that we recognized as the plan was coming together is there are a set of cross-cutting themes. There's some fundamental ideas that if we think about, uh, as we were in the auditorium, I saw that they were setting the stage for a, a youth production, literally. Mm -hmm. We're here in the next auditorium over setting the stage for the future with certain themes that are becoming extremely important. We call them cross-cutting objectives, things that uh, are shared by all the elements of the plan. And here are the four themes that we thought were really important. So the first big issue is that we needed to restore uh, a land use balance. We needed to preserve our existing neighborhoods, um, and we also need to um, give them assistance to um, uh, really get back in shape. Um, we, we've got great bones, but we want to preserve those, and we want to focus development to where it is. We also want to see some additional um, commercial development in proper areas. The next big thing is we need to really be a great community for the middle class. And so that involves what we're calling the three R's. So we need to retain the middle class that we have here now. We need to retrain some people who are in our community who aren't quite middle class yet. So how can we work with them either through education or job training programs uh, or entrepreneurship activities so they can grow into the middle class? And then we can also recruit a little. So how are people who are getting pushed out of Boston because it's so expensive? People are getting pushed out of Quincy. How do we attract those people to our community and uh, reinforce our sense of, of community and, and neighborhood? I think, uh, yeah, oh, go sorry, go ahead. Well, I think, I think part of this, we mentioned this notion of stewardship, uh, which is building, building community, a sense that uh, we all have a stake here in how can I uh, work with others to contribute is, is a question that we hope uh, has some answers in the, uh, uh, in the plan. But in terms of providing equity in a city as geographically diverse, as economically and ethnically diverse as, um, as Brockton, we want to make sure that we are being equitable and focusing on, on uh, distribution so that everybody shares in the progress in the next few years. And Providing equity um, it is, is very important. It, it's not just about the working class and the middle class and they need equity. There's, there's the equity between um, immigrants and longtime residents in our community. There's the equity between the races, but there's also a geographic equity between East and West. Um, you know, how do we take the, you know, and create jobs both on the East side of the city and the west side of the city, so we're not favoring one particular area or one particular ward over anybody else. So we're going to hit the top spots of uh, recommendations in, the, in each one of the elements and think about how it relates to those underlying objectives or themes. And in terms of the land use element, the goals for the future, including really getting into detailed land use and zoning plans to support job creation in some of the commercial districts and quarters that you have, which we uh, have known uh, for a while, but are, are really interesting as opportunity areas. Uh, and using your transit access uh, is a way of linking where development opportunities can be but there's certain activities to strengthen the neighborhoods in those areas that need reinvestment that are really important. So there are a series of recommendations that come along with this, uh, and uh, uh, of course they reflect those, those overall goals. But this notion that you really do have um, some, fo some focused areas where redevelopment could occur that is gonna have, uh, be very attractive uh, uh, if, if the city is proactive about them. But, the heart of a city is its downtown, and Brockton has wonderful assets in its downtown already, and it's important that the heart of the city 
uh, uh, become stronger and participate in the change as well. The, the next big topic that we deal with is economic development. We've done a lot of research uh, and uh, both um, on, on trends, um, how much buying power the city has, where the jobs are, what are the potential jobs for the future. And so we've come up with a series of goals that really have us looking at increasing the number of high quality um, jobs here in the city. Uh, we want to look at and redevelop underutilized sites and sometimes that's going to require the city or the redevelopment authority taking a more active role than just waiting for something to happen. Uh, we also want to change the perception of downtown and uh, we want to continue to promote job training uh, and education programs uh, for, for the people of Brockton so that we can all grow together. So the recommendations, again, focus on that. Uh, one of the things that we think is going to be very important as far as this is concerned is remembering the relationship and opportunities associated with your educational programs, the, the, the many special programs you have, for example, here at this high school. Uh, but uh, the, the, the key is to think about not necessarily attracting existing businesses, but growing businesses here. And how do you set the stage for entrepreneurial businesses that will be owned, will be places for people to work in who are Brockton, Brockton residents? Now, an important consideration from an overall land use and planning standpoint is that there are areas of the city that uh, we think are primed in the next uh, couple of decades to become centers for significant uh, regional development. This is an image that uh, takes a look at uh, the, the mall area over by uh, Good Samaritan a little bit and one of the things that's happening in many cities is that the old shopping mall style which is still has its, its, its validity um, but there's a lot of land being consumed by parking and an unused space and if uh, because of its proximity to Route 24 uh, in its central location within the region, these are the kinds of places that whole mixed-use districts are growing, and you're seeing this trend nationally, you're seeing it within the region. And so we did a few sketches to say, this could be the kind of place where uh, uh, significant buildings could occur next to the highway, not, not next to the residential areas. Uh, this is looking from the north down towards the uh, interchange uh, uh, by Route 27 with Oak Street in the foreground. Uh, and you can begin to see how uh, a, a whole pattern of development could occur. And there are ve not very many places within the entire greater Boston or even eastern Massachusetts region where the combination of highways, roadways, population, and land come together. So this is, these are examples of this high density, high value development. Uh, we really need to stop being a large parking lot city that is not generating any tax revenue and start building up, especially along the side of the expressway. It's not going to bring traffic into, the, into downtown, into the rest of the community, but it's going to provide opportunities for employment and much needed tax revenue. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Housing is the next big category that we're dealing with. Um, you know, as you drive through the neighborhoods, you know, we've got a really great housing stock. Really but we do have some neighborhoods that need some assistance. And we're going to be working with um, uh, Brockton Redevelopment Authority and other um, home ownership programs and housing rehab programs to really uh, make that uh, uh, those great neighborhoods again. But we want to make sure that we have housing for all different price categories and all different uh, levels of development. Um, we want to also um, rehabilitate the current housing and then how can we use some of our historic buildings uh, some of them are sitting vacant or underutilized how can we use those as catalytic uh, development opportunities for uh, new housing new housing of course drives uh, retail and people living in the community have dollars to spend in the community uh, and, and to implement the housing side Oops. of things, uh, uh, there are a series of recommendations, but this notion of preserving the existing residential neighborhoods is a theme that runs through, and promoting home ownership. Uh, when we look at communities, uh, we, we always keep an eye on what's the balance of home ownership versus rental. 
Brockton is a is an almost perfect balance point right now. Having rental housing available is really important for people different uh, uh, circumstances. But having a strong uh, home ownership is is having a, a commitment to this place. And the balance is really good now. But making sure that the home ownership stays an important part of it is is something that we've emphasized in the recommendations. Of course, if you're living here and it's a great place to live, the open space and recreation assets you have are great. It's uh, going to be an era, though, where matching up improved facilities, quality, better maintenance, the simple things that makes park and open space really part of a daily life is available and not that great an expenditure when you think about what the return on that investment is in terms of quality of life, attracting people to live, and increasingly, as we're finding, people like to work and have their businesses in places. You have a fantastic set of uh, parks and open spaces that other communities uh, can only dream about, but perhaps by uh, 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 thinking about the volunteer and nonprofits and the other ways of bringing more resources, uh, these can all be improved. And parks and open space are also an organizing element for creating a sense of community, a sense of ownership in the community. We have um, just gone through a renovation of two major parks in the city, uh, James, uh, the Edgar Playground uh, and uh, uh, Keith Park in the Campello neighborhood. Both of those territories have neighborhood groups around them. Uh, the Keith Park Neighborhood Association, the Edgar Park Neighborhood Association. And these are the opportunities now as we make investments in these parks for people to get out and to know who's around them and to participate in a growing community. So thinking about the natural and cultural resources, of course, some of those natural resources relate to open space and recreation. But you think about other aspects of, uh, of those resources, and it's about the people, and it's about the arts, and it's about the environmental health of Brockton. So this element of the, um, hopefully this works. There we go. Uh, this element of the master plan focuses on both these two sides of the community. Uh, we talk about sustainability. That's the ability to, uh, in, in these days, withstand uh, increasing storm events and other uh, aspects of the climate that uh, we are seeing changes in. Uh, but the notion that uh, urban places uh, can support a kind of agriculture is important. And finally, your, the natural spaces and the water resources you have are uh, uh, to be protected. You've got some strong um, resources that are part of it. From a cultural resource standpoint, it's a, it's, it's a different perspective, but also important. You know, we have some great history, um, and, and um, we have an, a, a nice historical society museum. We have a great art museum in our, in our community. But we also have uh, opportunities to celebrate uh, the newcomers to our community. And you know, we, we just had the Cape Verdean celebration uh, last weekend. Um, but there are other events throughout the city that we need to recognize and support. And um, you know, we also need to then um, you know, look at, at our existing heritage and celebrate that as, just as, as well. So that you'll find a series of recommendations that come along with this. Uh, one of the things that I want to um, uh, stress at the bottom of this list is that as we talk about community participation, you have a rich cult cultural uh, 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 life. Uh, and the more that we can find ways to share those resources, to share uh, the, the whether they're exhibits, whether they're celebrations, uh, and celebrate that aspect of the city uh, in a visible way, uh, it, will, it will make the quality of life and the interest for people to come and live and visit uh, Brockton even stronger. So many of these uh, recommendations uh, speak to that aspect of the city. Um, uh, let me get it back in alignment here. There we are. Services and facilities. Uh, the services and facilities are the foundation of a high quality community. And uh, we've heard again and again that there needs to continue to be a focus 
on increased public safety and a reduction in crime or sense of risk. Uh, and there are various recommendations that go from some of it is capital services facilities, uh, uh, a, a new police facility, for example, and different ways of uh, uh, providing those services. Uh, uh, as far as uh, the, the, the municipal facilities are concerned, there's a mu municipal facility master plan underway that Mr. May is managing. It will end up with a whole series of specific uh, recommendations that this plan will be linked to. Uh, but we heard again and again uh, in the neighborhoods that if there were a place where there could be more community centers for multicultural programs and services, it would be good. What we've emphasized in the plan, though, is that doesn't necessarily mean going out and building a bunch of community centers. Those could be going on in schools. They already are. They could be going on in some available storefronts. They can be going on in other facilities parks. that are already here, in the parks. Um, but there's the sense of we want to have more desirable places where youth, seniors, everybody can get together uh, 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 will be an important aspect of the future. So the recommendations associated with that as uh, with each of these re reflects specifically the goals and how they can be achieved. The infrastructure and utilities. Um, Part of this uh, is, uh, is, is getting organized. Brockton is a um, mature city. Um, okay. okay, we're old. Um, so in a lot of places, we have very old pipes and very old roads, and some have not been built to you know, the, the right standard. So we really need to work on um, classifying all our infrastructure, putting it into one large database, and creating a capital management plan or capital budget. Uh, so we know what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, we know what's in the ground, how it needs to be fixed, and we as a community can then sit around and say, all right, these are the priorities, these are the things that we need to maybe bond for, or we need to ask the state for more assistance, or the federal government, but at least we know and have decided as a group what what's a priority. We also need to look at our um, utility services and fees that uh, we're offering. So that's the water department and the sewer department. Um, we just um, had a major increase uh, in capacity in our, in our sewer department, uh, sewer processing, wastewater processing. So that allows us extra room for Brockton to grow and it gives us enough uh, capacity that we can potentially sell some of that capacity to neighboring communities. And as you know, I'm sure, uh, we're all looking at um, how Brockton gets a second source of water. Right now we have a desalinization plant. Um, do we enter into a relationship with them? Do we look at MWRA? But we're required to have a second source of water by the state. So we need to evaluate that uh, wholeheartedly, thoroughly. Excuse me. That was. A and uh, as you see, the the recommendations about how to accomplish some of these things, uh, the, you you have actually uh, uh, a a very strong uh, overall uh, infrastructure for the most part. Uh, uh, some of this we talk about 21st century city. Uh, there are new uh, computer programs. There are new. Uh, uh, methods for identifying where issues are, uh, creating uh, predictable steps and uh, uh, improvements to operate things uh, more efficiently to make sure that the fiber optic cables are working. You've already been working to upgrade the street lighting system. Additional things uh, could be done. So uh, uh, from our perspective, what we've uh, learned is how far you've come compared to other cities and keep going in the same directions. Now, uh, uh, as in uh, virtually every community in eastern Massachusetts, uh, if you just start talking to people about what's happening in the city, traffic and transportation and how to get to and from work and school uh, occupy an important part of it. Even though this is the last uh, major segment we're going to talk about, it's uh, not at all the least important. Um, and there are a series of recommendations that talk about every single mode, every single way that people can and should be moving around Brockton. Uh, part of this is uh, to think about 
uh, in the 21st century, we're recognizing that it's not all about cars. We're recognizing that great places to live are significantly about pedestrians and walkability. With, uh, uh, but bicycling travel is growing, and because of the importance of safe neighborhoods and solid neighborhoods, uh, implementing things like the Safe Routes to Schools program uh, is important. Uh, a constant theme um, uh, that came through is the notion of restoring two-way traffic to Main Street. Uh, in, in many communities are finding that the one-way systems that help traffic move around aren't the same as being able to get to and from where you want to go. It's not the same as being a good place to walk. Convenience, getting, getting to the front door of where you want to go may be even more important than just encouraging the flow of traffic alone. Um, but wherever we can create bike lanes and networks for people, uh, it would be great. Uh, one of the things that I might add uh, as a professional has an opportunity to work in many communities. Brockton is extremely well positioned uh, because of your uh, access and the, the T system, the bus systems, uh, the, uh, the roadway system, and the fact that you have multiple uh, roads and routes and arterials to get around town. So unlike some communities that are getting locked up and really hard to move around, um, with uh, ongoing planning and applied improvements in places, this will continue to have uh, transportation advantage relative to your neighbors. So um, this kind of brings us up to where we are at the moment. Uh, we uh, had, had a year-long planning process, and in a May planning board meeting that we had at West Junior High, we uh, made the first draft available for people, both online and um, hard copies. But, uh, we had hard copies in our office, in the libraries, and uh, the senior center and uh, several other places. Um, and it, of course, was also available online. And in that time, we uh, started a 30-day comment period where people could read the plan and get us back some information. And we did get comments, and we appreciate those comments. And you know, here's an example of uh, what we were discussing. Uh, comments included things like, how do you explain higher density mixed use development? What does that look like? Um, and the way we did that was, was creating some uh, context, context in our uh, document that says that we're talking about the number of jobs per acre or the, the value of the development that's going on uh, on a particular parcel. And uh, we also created some illustrative uh, drawings that you just saw a minute ago about the uh, Westgate area. We also talked, uh, there was a comment about what is Brockton's role in the region? We are the you know, capital, the, the, the center, the heart of uh, the Metro South uh, community. And there is a, um, um, but we're also at the crux of three counties, Plymouth, Bristol, and uh, Norfolk. And so how do we fit into that? And so we've added more economic data and we looked at um, how we shape up with those other communities that are, are around us. And then lastly, uh, you know, as an example, these aren't the only changes, but as an example, um, we wanted to um, have some idea. People ask, you know, what is the office market like? What is the industrial market like? What's the housing market like? And so we did uh, some significant analysis, and we've included that in our elements section, where we talk about what is the demand for office space? Where is it going? Um, what are the opportunities for Brockton? Uh, and, and we even looked at, you know, uh, different neighborhoods and what their retail uh, opportunities were. So that's all been included in the program now. So next steps, implementation. Um, as as um, we've uh, developed a matrix at the back of the plan and it talks about all the things that we've identified as goals or deliverables or, or recommendations. And then we've kind of assigned um, some leaders to the program uh, who we think should be leading it, and we've divided it up between, you know, city staff, city council, the planning board, the redevelopment authority, our partners like uh, uh, the neighborhood development groups, um, and and so there's there's a whole matrix at the back, but it's going to be our opportunity or our job to get this moving, to get people involved, or to continue their involvement in this and to really start implementing the plan uh, piece by piece. So 
Um, our next step, um, the planning board is going to um, uh, deliberate uh, and hopefully they will adopt the plan. And then we will again be taking this to city council. We hope to get them to endorse this. Um, it doesn't have, it just, under state law, we have to have it approved by the uh, planning board. We send it off to the Department of Housing and Human and uh, Housing and uh, Community Development uh, for their um, stamp of good uh, good housekeeping. Uh, but this is again, this is the people's plan, and we all have some responsibility for implementing and making sure that we have the Brockton in the future that we want it to be. So thank you very much. Mr. I'd like to open it up to the board if anyone has any uh, questions, comments. Okay, great. Thank you, Bob. Any other comments? Yeah, Dredge. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the uh, capital improvement plan. Um, how long uh, for a time frame do you feel um, you need to complete that capital improvement plan, and particularly building the database? Okay. Uh, the question was, how long should it take to develop a capital plan uh, and document all this information? The 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 engineering department in the DPW um, is in the process and, and working with um, our IT information technology department and uh, they're evaluating uh, geographic uh, GIS uh, systems and um, if you've ever been in the engineering department we have this big vault and tons of documents all on paper all on vellum and we have a, a very um, well-regarded uh, uh, city engineering supervisor who has a ton of information in his head. Uh, we need to get that into a computer. It should take, um, you know, a, a good part of a year to start gathering and making sure that we have all the information in the system. Then it just takes a, a couple of months to actually develop a budget or capital capital improvement plan. Um, so the, I think that that's something that, you know, before. Um, you know, two years is out, we could have that available. And, 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 and this is a project that has to be led by DPW, by the way. But uh, it is something that, that is very manageable with the current technology and our current staff. Now, you mentioned the high density mixed use development districts, and you use the Westgate Mall as, as, as probably the most appropriate district to, to have one of those. Uh, which other districts have you identified? Um, in the plan, we do have an element section, uh, a land use element section that, that shows a uh, proposed future land use plan. And we're looking at the area around Westgate, or, well, basically along the Route 24 spine. So we're looking at the Westgate and the Good Samaritan Hospital area uh, on the north side, and then what's tra been traditionally called the Coesit Brook area. And that is from the uh, VA hospital over to the Easton town line along uh, Belmont, uh, basically south of Belmont. There's a lot of um, industry and uh, car dealerships down there, but what, um, what's the right use for that in the future? And so uh, we've been really uh, analyzing how do we create more jobs in the community, and those are the kind of places that we would want to see that kind of development happen, because it doesn't bring cars into the neighborhood. It keeps them um, on the side of the highway, and it um, provides you know a, a, a great deal of land for development without displacing people. Um, we can move things around while this kind of use is uh, while this planning process is going on. Uh, Gary had a question. I <clears throat> Mr. May, um, I know you said you're going to create a capital budget. Um, to, to fund all this do you have any uh, can you go into any type of depth as to how you plan to fund this capital budget where this money's coming from um, the city is going to have to develop a capital budget to you know take a look at how we spend our money and it's important as taxpayers um, and as residents of the city that that this is done in a, a very open and, and fair process we pay um, sewer fees and water fees. A percentage of that is being um, uh, held for capital improvements. 
There's also um, federal funds from the Department of Transportation. Um, there's uh, money that's um, uh, made available from FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, that could help us implement uh, stormwater and flood mitigation projects uh, in the future. So we need to know where all these funds are coming from, or um, uh, where these needs are, but it's up to the city council then who is, is going to budget that on a year-by-year -year basis. The slide that you showed there of the, the long-term projection of the, the Good Sam and Westgate Mall area, um, you, you didn't get into too much detail, but is that, is that expected to be a, a, a balanced mix of residential and commercial? We are talking about a, uh, uh, we're talking about the high density, high value development um, where we've uh, shown an area around Good Sam and Westgate, and then also Coesit Brook. Um, the example that we put up is, you know, in the Westgate area, and it does have more of a mixed use. There's there's high density office along the, uh, and this is just a, an initial conceptual drawing, um, but there's four or five major property owners in that area and if we can get them to work together we could see greater value here in brockton so we do look at, at more office um, uh, opportunity along the edge of the expressway uh, more of a mixed use retail some office some residential in a more of a neighborhood core and i don't know if if anybody's been to assembly row or assembly square in in somerville uh, you've, you've got that retail on the first floor and, and some residential above at different price points. And then it also contains uh, space for big box. So the Lowe's, the uh, Walmarts, the Targets, the things like that, they're probably going to stay pretty competitive in our community. Um, but we need to integrate them into the community where we want them and where they're going to enhance our neighborhoods as opposed to becoming a, a a big sea of, of parking and not have any ripple effect, add on uh, op economic opportunity for the community. You mentioned uh, becoming a transit oriented community and uh, this brings up a, uh, a comment and, and a question. Uh, we've seen some interesting projects come before the planning board uh, that involve uh, 40R projects and, and a big holdup has been uh, parking for a number of these projects, and, it, and, and a lot of it is, is kind of an antiquated view. Um, how do we address that, that issue and, and, and become a more modern city, uh, transit-oriented, walking a walkable city, especially in an era of Uber and Zipcar and, and other services like that? Thank you. I, I should remind you that the microphone is basically for the cable television, so it's not broadcasting out into the, into the auditorium. So if you could project, please. Um, so. There's a, a proposed land use map in, in there for, for future Brockton. And uh, there's another map right behind it that talks about uh, the areas that uh, we call it, you know, Brockton 2025. And so it's, it's the need to do master plans for each of these neighborhood districts. Uh, we just finished up the downtown plan about a year ago. Um, but, and we're about to start a plan for uh, Campello. But right behind that, you know, is Good Sam or uh, Montello or the area uh, along um, Center and Crest, uh, Center and um, Quincy or, or Crescent and Quincy. All those areas need to be studied, and as we go through those, we need to readjust the zoning for each one of those plans, each one of those districts, so that it's the zoning supports the end goal. At the same time, we've got an existing zoning code that we need to update and adapt for uh, modern uh, society, uh, or the way that we have uh, modern development. The zoning codes are usually written for a cornfield that you're going to build everything from scratch. And it's kind of hard to take this, you know, bucolic plan that, that has all this space for parking and shove that into um, the confines of a city. So we need to look at um, parking in particular in these areas. And so especially in, in our transit corridors around the train stations, we do have three of them, um, which is 
I don't, there's only one other city that has three train stations, train, train stations that's Melrose. Um, so we're very, very lucky to have that access to Boston and the job market. But um, where we're redeveloping in those communities, we need to right size the zoning to support development. And we need to right size zoning citywide in the meantime um, to allow for development to, to occur in the city. And so the city council has asked us to draft a, a new zoning um, amendment that deals specifically with parking. We hope to be introducing that sometime this fall. Any other questions from the board? Okay, great. So at this point, I, I'd like to just open it up to the audience. If there's anyone that wants to um, comment or uh, have their say, you're more than welcome to. Hi, my name is Grizel Quinones, and I'm from the uh, city of Brockton on the northwest side. And my question to all here and the audience and the uh, staff on the board, if funds are going down to the downtown side of Brockton, what is going to happen to the northwest, northeast side of Brockton, where I, I heard everything that was being said, that they're creating jobs by the Westgate Mall, which I live in that location, near that location. But what's going to happen to our housing, you know, and so on and so forth, as well as um, my husband, who's in the back there, Rico Roberto Quinones. Um, we're also, we also have partaken on a part of um, Ash Street and Belmont, mm -hmm. one of the uh, parks, though, as you mentioned, Keith Park and uh, Edgar, Car Edgar Park Association has overdeveloped and have had neighborhoods entering so on and so forth so we would like to know what is going to be in that park is it going to be um, restored um, re recreated are there any funds for that park within the next coming year or so um, the question is um, you know we've seen a lot of investment and activity going on downtown but where are our opportunities in in the other neighborhoods and uh, especially for reinvestment and and where does the city um, get funds to do those kinds of things and then there was a side question about um, Ash Street or Brent playground um, and you know what's the city going to be doing in, in that area so first of all the the whole purpose of of creating this capital investment plan uh, our capital improvement plan is that we know we as a city know what all the projects are what needs to get taken care of and we can look at it at one fell swoop and as a community we decide where those what projects get funded that's going to be through city council but i think it's a it should be a very open process ash playground ash street playground brent playground just like a lot of the other parks we think um, we should continue to uh, make improvements in our parks and as a matter of fact one of the goals is to revitalize every one of the parks we can probably do one a year uh, we use uh, state funding and we use funding from our community development block grant block grant which is from the brockton redevelopment authority and if you've been in any of the parks um, that we've been working on uh, it's a very public participatory process. So we just finished up a plan um, for the uh, Walker Playground and we'll be putting that out to bid shortly. But we had several community meetings uh, where we heard uh, the concerns of neighbors. We kind of all sat around tables and laid out um, diagrams and, and uh, did mapping exercises and what could fit in the park and then what can fit into our budget. And I think we came out with a really, really great plan for the community. But it, again, it's a community plan. So I can't say what's going to be in Ash Playground until we all sit down and start having a, a conversation about it. Thank you. Thank you. Counselor? 
Hello, I'm the Ward 5 City Councilor Ian Beauregard, and uh, I read this plan. I recommend that people do read the plan. Everybody needs to remember, this is a draft. It's not the official plan. And you can go over and make comments. A lot of times, some of the situations that affect and affect us are not, how would I say, as tangible as uh, we'd like to be able to see them in the sense that if we say, okay, we see a, a dilapidated building, that's tangible and we can turn around and say, all right, we can sell the building or we can repair the building. Sometimes some of the concepts, beliefs, values, and um, practices of people don't are not always to our benefit and interpretation, of course. I am perceived as a middle-aged white woman and people will say things to me that they might not put down on paper or say to other people. But when we talk about public safety, some people interpret this as being the police and the fire department. That is a part of it, but that is not what some people perceive as. I cover Ward 5 and that's part of downtown, it's one half. And a lot of people say they don't want to come downtown because of what they see. Changing that is by practice, and that is where we, we run into a problem. I believe that we've seen some positives, and we need to see more of those. But by people not speaking out or not saying what they believe in or why they want to see something change, of course, not everybody is as vocal as me, I realize, but you can always put it on paper, send it an email, because they are still accepting uh, responses, interpretations. You can send them to rmay at cobma.us, which stands for City of Brockton, Mass you know, ma, Massachusetts, dot, um, you know, um, I'm sorry, but what I really, you know, U.S., but what I really want to emphasize with this is your ideas matter. And don't think because you're saying something, it means nothing, because that's not the case. That's how things get done with people's ideas, people's implementation. And I'll cite a couple of examples. I'm downtown just about every day with uh, the Brockton Public Library System. No, I'm not an employee there, but I'm involved with a small volunteer-based nonprofit. Through that, we get people that come in with ideas that they want to implement. Because of that, we've been able to see many programs take place through the Broughton Public Library System, which is the sixth largest in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That is downtown, and there's a location on the east side and a location on the west side. So that encompasses already trans, you know, transactions that are taking place. Out of that, we have workshops, forums, and programs. We also have associations in this city that everyone is welcome to attend to, even if they're not members. And there's one called the Campello Business Association. There's one called the Downtown Brockton Association. And there's another called the Montello Business Association. This helps business people, nonprofits, elected officials, and other individuals find out what you need, what you're frustrated about, what you wish to have, and also the dialogue helps people understand what something you know takes place. I mean, over the years, we've seen many misinterpretations and misunderstandings, and through uh, no fault of anyone's, but because maybe there wasn't enough communication. So this is an opportunity, one, to speak out, so I'm kind of up here to invite you to speak out because nothing is too small or too large to discuss because it's all part of the community. So anyway, I'll, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I just want to say the counselor makes a really good point um, about public safety. It's not necessarily about more police officers. It can also be about how the police officers do their job. It's also about changing our, our uh, street lights to LED that adds more light on the street. And it's also um, defensive, I, I, I'm gonna butcher the name, I'm sorry, but it's, it's defensive landscaping. But uh, I, I forgot the defensible space. defensible space theory. You know, a, a lot of people have really large bushes in their front yard and, and you know, you can't see the house. Well, if you can't see the house, you can't see the person that's hiding behind the bushes trying to open the window in the middle of the night. So trimming bushes 
adding outdoor lights. There are all these little things that we could be doing that are going to increase public safety for everybody. So it's not just necessarily hiring more police officers. Yes, we need to do that, but we have a role in that by joining block clubs and neighborhood watch and trimming your bushes. Okay. There you are. Thank you. I'm Jean Holmes, a resident. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. If not, uh, just yell. Um, I, I have a few comments and questions. Um, first of all, I think it would be helpful for the residents to know what the cost of this um, uh, package was, because I think that that certainly is something that we need to know what is being spent on uh, this paper plan. Um, and, and I raise that as, as an issue because the fact of the matter is, is that I read through this plan after it was written. I attended many of the meetings, and it seems as though many of the things that I recall being said at the tables I was at is not in this plan. Don't know how that really happened, um, but maybe, you know, whoever put this together needs to go back to the notes, back to the, the, the things that were discussed um, to make sure that everybody's voice is heard, everybody is incorporated into this. My, my concerns are that this plan, although a wonderful thing on paper, we have to really recognize and understand what is it really for the city of Brockton. We can have all the dreams in the world, trust me, I have dreams too, but guess what? My dreams don't always come true. I'm not a child anymore, I'm an adult, and I am realistic about that. And we cannot allow ourselves to be put into a position in which we don't put input, don't speak out when we see something that is troublesome to us and ask, why is that? Why is it that the comments are not in there? Why is it that we're hearing all these promises? We hear promises every day. Quite frankly, I was at a meeting just the other day and there was representations made by a city official. I won't call them out right now, but let me tell you, they said, oh, we'll get this. We can get this. And then when further questions were asked, well, I don't know if we really can get that. Well, then why did you say it? So my question on this plan and my concern is, and I hope people will speak out, is what is real about this? What is tangible? What is really going to happen? Because we want to know what's going to happen for real in our lifetime. Comments I would make about the bicycles. Um, I don't know if anybody knows, but on the Sundays uh, in this city, there is a bike lane that is completely blocked. And it is known to the authorities, it's been reported to the Brockton police, and they disregard it. So with all due respect, you may have a plan here on paper, but then you don't have anybody that is willing to enforce what is on paper. We have laws on the books right now that are not being enforced by the police department. Now, maybe there's somebody else that can help with that. Maybe there isn't. But with all due respect, Mr. May, you know about this. I told you about it. Blocked again the other day, just this Sunday. My husband and I are trying to go back to our house through the downtown, and we got run off the road by the other vehicles coming towards the city because of the cars that are parked in the bike lane. So it's an accident waiting to happen. It's sure that someone's going to get hit. It may even be me. Um, but in any event, if it is, you heard from me first. I have to say, this particular plan, it, 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 it's nice that these people come from these think tanks and they come in and they put things on paper and it's all pretty and everything else. But really, is it built on a solid foundation? And I don't believe that it is. And I don't know where in there it says that this plan is actually built on a solid foundation. And you can have all the plans and all the dreams and everything else, but when you build it on a plot of quicksand, it simply goes away because you don't have that foundation. So respectfully, we need to get that foundation before we start spending money, quite frankly, or if the money's already been spent, figure out how we're going to actually be able to implement any of this and not just rely upon, well, we could have this and we could have that. People don't use the train in Brockton to go to Boston because it doesn't work well for them. You can't get a train to get to Boston when you need to. That's why people live in Quincy, because there's multiple avenues 
and trains for them to take. So we have three stops, but those three stops don't really get us anywhere. I've been by Campello. When you get off of there, you'd think that the, the, the Patriots just game just got out when you're walk at, watching all the people running to where? To their cars. Yes, to the cars because here in Brockton, people use cars. Quite frankly, they probably wouldn't dare use a bike because they're probably going to get run over by the cars uh, and all the cars that we have in Brockton. So, uh, you know, I, I ask people to, to make, you know, their own observations, the ones that attended these meetings, see if your comments are in there. If they're not, I didn't see mine, I didn't see the ones at my table, but I encourage everybody else to do the same. And I also, you know, encourage you to, you know, insist that we're going to have something that shows the foundation of this blueprint because you know we can have all the blueprints of all the wonderful houses I've done blueprints for additions to my house for 20 30 years guess what it's still the same house as when I bought it 27 years ago okay so again blueprints are great but we need to have the foundation and you need to have the money in order to put any of this in so you know I think it's a pretty picture it's a pretty little thing I'm sure people put it together and spent a lot of time on it but respectfully People need to add um, their own comments. Thank you. I sent them in writing. I sent them in. I, I, I didn't bring my notes with me, but I'm happy to pull them together and I'll send them to you, Mr. Palagi. I didn't bring them with me tonight. I left work and raced here. I thought this meeting was at 7, actually, and so I raced right from work to here. I'm happy to share it with the board. As you know, Mr. Pelagi, I don't mind following up. I will send you the, the comments that I did not see in this plan that were at the tables that I was at at the various meetings I attended. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak? Yeah, sure. Come on up. Thank you, everyone. I'm Lynn Smith. I live in Campello. A lot of you might know me. Anytime you go by a corner in Brockton and you see a little free library, that's what our volunteers did. And you know what they said? They'll never last. Four years they've been up. Every time you go by the Douglas Community Garden, which was filled with washing machines and oil tanks and drugs, and now it's a flower garden, and it's the only outdoor art that's been put up in Brockton in the last five years, honoring Amakal Cabral, Toussaint Louverture, um, Susan B. Anthony, and Daniel O'Connell, guess what? It's still standing. When you think that 50 kids are gonna show up for a holiday history lantern walk in Campello, and 222 kids and their families show up, and they walk Campello, and they go to a local church, and they have a concert, we're still standing. And when we do a pop-up village, and we talk about the immigrants of 100 years ago and what they went through, and those immigrants who came dressed in their folkloric costumes talk to the immigrants of today and the challenges that they're going through, and they learn from each other, we're still standing. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. He didn't say, I have a plan. He said, I have a dream. And that's what this blueprint is all about. This is our dream. Now, I get it. The difference between dream and reality is action. And I hope the planning board, and I hope the city council, and I hope the zoning commission all hold people accountable to turn this plan into action. But I believe from the work that I've done with a lot of you who are in here in the room, we believe in Brockton. We believe we can get this done. There's two elements that I want to see a lot of attention to that I don't see. One is the cultural events that we talk about that are important to bring communities together, we need funding for that. You know, in many communities, when a big development is coming in, there's an art and cultural fund that's created. One, two, three basis points are added to the cost of the development. It might only 
generate ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars, but it's enough to do the things that we want to do to create communities around our parks, around our town green. So that's one. The arts usually lead the redevelopment and the revitalization of an area. So let's focus on the arts. Can we figure out a way to fund arts in our community through this plan? The second thing is, and I heard it mentioned today, a lot of our neighborhoods might feel a little left out. They hear a lot about the development downtown. Well, you know, there was a very famous mayor in Boston who figured out how linkage works. And he figured out how to have little city halls, you might call them community centers, but he figured out how this development helped fund the neighborhoods. And I think that that might be something that gets people more engaged. If any of you have ever built a house, if any of you have looked at a blueprint, if any of you are in the building trades, there's always a change order always a change order and we might have change orders in this but it's our job as citizens to hold our public officials accountable for getting this work done and then we can say we have a plan and a dream and its reality so thank you all everybody who went to all of the meetings everybody who read the report everybody who voiced their opinion everybody who listened Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't want this on a shelf. I want to see it happen. That's our job as citizens to see it happen. Good evening, I'm Ellie Wentworth. 50-year uh, resident in the same house on the east side of Brockton, 60 years to the same man. Married, excuse me, to the same man. <laughs> uh, I hate to build, try to even try to build on what Lynn's great words were, but she's thinking along the same way I was. Um, I, again, thank you all for this committee. You've done a great job. Rob May has been such a positive factor. The only one that equals him is Lynn. <laughs> Lynn Smith and Rob May have been the greatest people to come to this city in years. And I, I have to say, yes, I have a dream too, but I'm seeing the dream come true. I never thought this would happen. I never thought I'd walk downtown. I was thinking on the way over here. I'm having a family reunion with my children and my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren in two weeks. They're coming from all over the country. And I'm so blessed to be able to do that. Um, but I was thinking, you know, I should tell them to drive down Belmont Street. No, to come down Belmont off 123, go over, come down West Elm Street all the way to Maine, take a left, and then by this time, Center Street will be finished. Then drive down Center Street, because I want them to see the change. They remember how bad it was when we were living here. The, and, the, and the crime will always be here. We're a city, and it's everywhere. It's even in the nice communities, the nice communities. They all are affected by these drugs and guns. And there's not, the only thing we can do, in my opinion, is to pray for this and to help people who are less fortunate. But in any case, I, I just love the plan. I love the way you put things together, the way you brought us together at separate tables and had us identify areas we wanted this and that done, the places we went to shop, to, to pray, to work, and locate them all in the, uh, on board so you could put them together. I was a statistician myself, and I love statistics. I love details, and you guys did the work that was behind it, and I really appreciate it. What I have to say to the public is, Keep dreaming. We are ripe. We are ripe to grow here and back our people. As far as the train's concerned, I just took the train to meet my granddaughter in Harvard Square. I went to South Station. That's 35 minutes. I got on the red line. I was, and I, this is from downtown. I was in Harvard Square in an hour and five minutes. Huh? An hour and five minutes? Our, pub, our public transportation doesn't work? What, are you kidding me? When I go to Boston to the cathedral, I have to go, I take the train. Whenever I want to go any place in Boston, I take the train. I love it. 
but anyway, um, it, it's, it's such a benefit. And as far as the parking lots, yeah, the parking lots are for the people that work here. Or the people that may be on our, on our borders. Well, they may even stop by a store on the way home. It's wonderful. I think everything is working well. We have to get a positive attitude. We've got to stop thinking that we're a, a broken city. We are not broken people. We are champions, and you've got to act like champions in order to get this to work. These people are trying. We've got to go along with them. Sure, they're going to make mistakes, and, and I appreciate everything you've done and all the hard work you've put behind this, especially you, Rob May, and Lynn Smith. Thank you. Back to the chair. Okay, so I don't see any other um, comments. So thank you very much for your uh, your thoughtful comments here tonight. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll turn it back to the board, and we can uh, entertain a motion. I make a motion to accept the plan as written. Okay, the motion is made to uh, accept and endorse the plan as written by seconded. Gary, seconded by Craig. All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn made, seconded by Craig. We are adjourned. Thank you.